Hello everyone, so um, it's Halloween, so I'm going to do a very quick Halloween themed sketch. We're going to just use a fountain pen, some lovely colours. You can see there's a bright orange already out there and you can guess perhaps what's got me inspired to do this. So without further ado, let's just have a bit of fun sketching our little pumpkin. So just going to take a sort of good loose shape here. Just a sort of loose outline of a pumpkin-y shape. We all know what that feels like. Perhaps we can call this, we haven't yet um, carved our, our pumpkin, so perhaps we can call this my uh, planning session for the design I might make. Now, because it's a carved pumpkin, as we just said, let's, let's give it a little sort of hat. And let's also give it a really nice stalk on the top. All we're doing is picking out sort of easy shapes here, simple, simple shapes. And it's fun just having, you know, using our little sketching skills to do something a bit um, thematic and fitting in with our daily lives, isn't it? So we've got our, our pumpkin coming together now. And I think it's just time to have a think about what design we're going to go for. And I'm not going to go too fancy. I'm not that good at carving, so let's go with a couple of just simple eyes. And instead of trying too hard to draw circles, I'm going to not try hard to draw circles. I'm going to make them purposefully wonky. We get a nice sort of mouth here. I think if we make it really wide, it sort of looks suitably creepy. And then we can just add a couple of easy sort of fangs in there as well. And do we need a nose? Yeah, why not? Let's have a little hole for a nose as well. Now what are we missing here? We're missing a bit of shape. So let's just get the inside of these things carved in as well. And they can be at any angle because it depends how we've carved it, doesn't it? But let's just try and get the idea that we're looking across at this. But it's also a bit wonky. Then realistically we'd be looking down on the on the mouth here, wouldn't we? And we can actually get some of those horizontal perspective lines in a little bit of these inside of these nice incisors as well there we go so we're, we're starting to build something up and it's got even just with these little internal lines it's starting to have a real sense of shape now let's get some more of these sort of planes of planes of the pumpkin so he's got these these lines coming down doesn't he and that defines a lot of the the shadows that we see within the pumpkin And they don't need to be clever, just nice and loose little lines coming along. And there we go, that's plenty. And then where's our, our light source? Well, our light source is actually on the inside, isn't it? So we can pop a little edge of a suggestion of a tea light just to remind ourselves. We can actually pop some internal little lines so that we're aware that inside there's something going on. Another thing, this is basically a still life, if we're going to be talking art. So a really important aspect of a still life is to have a, a horizon line. Something which shows that our object is on the ground or hanging or whatever. But we need that horizon line to begin to understand that. Now I'm going to use my fountain pen to get some of the shadows. So we're going to have an internal light source. So we're going to basically have a fun glow aren't we and that means our shadows are going to be a little bit odd compared to normal now there's certainly going to be shadow under here what we can do is we can make our hatching just follow the lines of our pumpkin the reason there's obviously going to be hatch, uh, shadow in there is because that's where the curve goes there's also going to be shadow on the top Again, because this is curving away from the light, which is going to be glowing out from the inside. And then what we can do is we can get next to our sort of ridges. We can also start mapping in some of these little textures that we'd naturally find there. So just 
using lovely pen lines to introduce that texture and that shape. Just refreshing the ink level a little bit because I've obviously almost run out of ink in this in this pen. That's a bit better. Just getting a bit more shadow coming under this little ridge as well and above this ridge. And then we're also going to have a, a funny shadow being cast underneath. And there we go, I think that is the line work done. So let's have a bit of fun with our colours. So what have we got? Well, we're going to have a nice orange pumpkin, so really loosely. We'll just fill that with a lovely bit of orange. It's mixed in with a bit of red as well. And this is loose, so let's just let it be loose. Now, whilst things are still nice and wet, we want to start getting that glow. So a little bit of quinacridone. And a little bit of quinacridone popping in these eyes and also pooling out and that's why the wet helps because it means that we get this glow effect just pooling out now just going to introduce some more shadows so using a mix of perlene and moon glow we can come around the edges and let things mingle. And don't forget important little touches of other colours like the green up here. And then we can start enhancing some of our things like the orange. bit more of a quinacridone and you see how these colors just building and building now how do we make this bright we'll make this bright by having everything else dark so the contrast is what will make our pumpkin seem like he's shining so gonna have a nice dark black background and the top of the pumpkin because it's going to be in so much shade we'll kind of merge with that background so we can be really loose and let that dark colour, in this case I'm using the perlene, uh, not perlene, a Payne's grey, and that black just come all the way around and all the colours converge. And this is a lot like when we're doing a, a night sketch of a of an urban scene as well. Okay and then in the foreground I'm going to just change the colour up so that we've got a little bit of contrast and I'm going to mix a bit of perlene violet with a bit of Van Dyke brown and give us a kind of slightly warmer table colour. But it's going to mix and mingle and that's fine. We'll not just allow it, we'll encourage it a bit to do that. And then encourage these shadows again to just merge and blend together. In the background let's just intensify some of that Payne's grey. Do you see how we've lost some colours because we're painting so loose as things merge and move. So the bit that I noticed just there that we've lost is our green stalk. That's fine, we can add him in. We can touch in bits of green elsewhere as well and if you have a nice sort of uh, festive squash rather than a sort of true Halloween type classic pumpkin actually you've got a lot of greens and 
browns going on normally in your in your pumpkin, not just bright orange. And we can mix that together with a bit of our some table brown or even a bit more of our violet and we can start just getting some of those variations going. So what we really want to do is get those bright areas to be really bright. The way to achieve that, like I said, is get the other areas to be quite dark. And while things are still nice and wet, we can take some white. In this case, I'm just going to use a, a, um, a Posca pen and we can add in a real central area of white. There we go. Really activate it and that can be the white glimpsing out. Now, that has obviously overactivated on me, but that is one of the reasons why we paint nice and loose and nice and wet, because it means I can come back and I can remove some of that. And now it is still spreading, but it's more contained. Then we can always come and correct some of those colours again, so we can come back in with our darker colours. bolder colours and even with our greens up here and then last touch of colour I think is a little bit more of these dark shadows and there we go so I'm going to let this dry it's going to take a little while um, and then we can have a look at the pen and see if there's anything else that we want to add in there. And there we go. So the internal bit is dry, which is enough for now, because it means we can come back in with our pen and we can add a little bit of uh, dark on top of our lines. I'm just going to use a little brush pen. Um, and the, the rationale for that is because I want a nice bold line and um, my fountain pen's run out of ink. Um, so rather than get messy and get my ink out this, this evening, I'm just going to use what I've got to hand. And it just means we take a slightly different approach and our lines will look a little bit different, which is fine. So just going to enhance some of these dark lines where we sort of glazed over them with a lot of colour and then as a result they sort of faded behind that, behind that colour, which is almost becoming a little opaque because it's thick watercolour. We can do the same with important features. The nice thing about using brush pen is you can start getting different textures in, so you can do quick, bold strokes, and that really enhances a bit of the contrast. But you can also do more delicate, fairly fine, wavy strokes. You can see this way we can very easily rebuild our image under these fun sort of wavy colours. Let's get our, our little light back in there. Just a little suggestion of something going on in the back of our pumpkin and we can even make it dark in a couple of places where the corners of the mouth aren't going to be getting any light are they? Just bring in that element of bold shadow. And we're basically there for a fun little life fair or holiday event inspired little sketch. And I guess I need to uh, attempt to make this pumpkin now, don't I really? Something very similar to this at least. And there we go. So there is my little jack-o'-lantern uh, pumpkin, really glowing, nice and dark background and really bold and bright little pumpkin. And all just through a little bit of loose line work, a little bit of fun with some very loose colours and bring it all together with some spontaneous brush pen. So I hope you've enjoyed that. Have a fun evening if you get into the Halloween spirit. We'll be having some pumpkin soup because I hollowed out a couple of these to carve. 
but doing some carving and then probably watching the Great British Bake Off. Anyway, hope you've enjoyed this and have a good evening.